Welcome to this week's episode of Talking Point. As usual, we have eminent guests on this show. And this week, too, we have the Honorable Mayor of Enfield, Mr. Chaudhary Anwar. Welcome to the show, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. How are you today? I'm OK so far. Thank you very much for coming along all this way about you said about 40 minutes. 40 but, minute uh, journey, you, yes. You, 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 somebody who drove for you must be a very expert driver because Absolute, sometimes it can take absolutely. one hour and 40 minutes. It's fantastic. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to ask you, see, uh, what is the job uh, of a mayor? But uh, before that, uh, I would like to ask you, you are, are, are the first uh, British Bangladeshi mayor of Enfield. There are not too many British Bangladeshi mayors, but uh, how long has been your journey and uh, how did you enter the local government and you got elected as a councillor and then what did you do? What is your role? Okay. I think the main thing is that I was never a politician. Mm -hmm. I was a careerist and I think I started my job in this country as the assistant labor attache of Pakistan High Commission mm -hmm. and I was the first officer to leave the job in 71 mm -hmm. and I threw my paper in front of the High Commissioner say I'm living today mm -hmm. and then I went to Oxford where I was the director of restoration for so nearly you left your job and there was nothing to look forward no, to. No I had because I was well connected with the restoration industry right. like Sarbon and Carter all the people mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they would love to get me there as one of the director because right. I was working with them before mm -hmm. so I had the advantage and I uh -huh. didn't lose even a day. I got a job immediately. Mm -hmm. So I went to Oxford and there I started as a career mm -hmm. called a Director of Restoration. Mm -hmm. I was there for eight, 12 years. That was mm -hmm. the longest. Mm -hmm. That's why I know Oxford, everything in Oxford, all the... Uh, the Restoration's uh, board or commission that was there does not exist anymore, anymore isn't no. it? That's all gone. So for the benefit of our listeners and viewers, uh, would you elaborate what it was, what was it, what it entailed? I think in 1965, the first time the restoration law came into being, mm -hmm. and at the time we used to call the law is a toothless greyhound, that means mm -hmm. it has no power. Just to say that to, if somebody discriminated, an inspector will come and try to negotiate mm -hmm. and find a solution. There is no teeth in that law. Mm -hmm. Then 1971, that had been strengthened to give more power to the restoration board at the time. And that board had a tremendous power to going out and investigate the industry, employer, anybody they wanted to. And they used to serve a notice of compliance. That means you have to do this, this, and that to comply with the restoration law. If they didn't, then they will take them to court. Right. And there's a but huge compared fight. to today, uh, in, back in 1971 and late 60s, there were not so many people from abroad of other races? I think that is, that is not true. I think that, for example, the borough I come from, which is the London borough of Enfield, mm -hmm. where you wouldn't believe me that when I went there, there are only 20% from ethnic minorities. Now the 60%. Yes, yeah, that's what I was saying, that see, now the number has gone up. Very, very half, and it is no more. I think the, they used to call Enfield is a white, Mm -hmm. land, but mm -hmm. that is no more. This mm -hmm. is like Somalian, Turkish, mm -hmm. Greek, mm -hmm. Bangladeshi, Indian, Caribbean, so it is full of various nationalities in Enfield. But going back to the restoration actually, then I came to Enfield where I took a job as a first director of restoration, but I lasted there for nearly three years, not more than the, mm -hmm. I had a conflict with the at that time, conservative administration, they didn't want to bow their head, they didn't want to do anything about mm -hmm. the equality. Mm -hmm. I left in disgust. So I went to the neighboring borough, which is London Borough, Waltham Forest. So actually, I right. worked. So you, 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 you lost the race? Yeah. I didn't lost, lose <laughs> the race because unless I achieve, I don't remain there. Because if just to sit down and get money and do, and at the end of the day, I go home. That is not my job. I never. The purpose was not there. No. Unless I achieve something at the end of the day, I will never stay anywhere. Right. And same thing, 
I think I came into politics in 1906, about seven years ago. Mm -hmm. That is my mm -hmm. politics. Mm -hmm. And I you mean the lo local politics? Local politics. So that is, n previously, I was all in neutral. As a director, mm -hmm. conservative, labor. You had to be. Everybody come to me as an officer of the bar and head of the resolution. I cannot support any of mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. political mm -hmm. parties. Mm -hmm. But after determined, I decided I should go into the politics and see what did they do. Right. And as a result of that, I joined the Labour Party. Mm -hmm. Then I stood as a councillor mm -hmm. in 2006. Mm -hmm. And because the area I live, which is London Borough of Enfield, Pondas, and the, where the mostly Bangladeshi live, uh -huh. and so I scored the highest votes mm -hmm. in local election. Well, what is the population of British Bangladesh is there? About 10,000. 10,000. Out of 320,000. Mm -hmm. So that's not big population. Yeah. How are they doing, these British Bangladeshis in your borough? In our borough, there is a high unemployment. The word nearly 17%, I think, unemployed. Mm -hmm. Particularly young people, they don't get the job. And also the motivation is not there. There is no sure. leadership. So do you mean that the British Bangladeshis are, are more at disadvantage? Yes. Yes, absolutely. They are disadvantaged. So because they do not want to get the power in near their own hand. I think mm -hmm. that's the reason why mm -hmm. I came into politics. Mm -hmm. I came into politics first thing, second term we won. First term to the conservative, I was in opposition. And the second time when we won, I immediately took the job as a cabinet minister. That means I was in charge of the whole voluntary sector. Mm -hmm. And after one year, I gave it up. And then say, no, I want to a couple of years. Then I become the mayor. So this last four years, you'll see that I must have some kind of responsibility. And I believe if you go to politics, if you want to bring changes, you have to have the power to bring about, bring about true, the changes. True, true. Without the power and shouting on the fence does not bring anything. It will remain. Because after talking to so many politicians, I know that. They say you get used to it. People shout. You know that they, are, they will be shouting. That is the part of the phenomenal in our situation. You said there are 10,000 Bangladeshi uh, origin uh, British living in, in Enfield. Now what is the demographic picture, the big picture? Who, who, who are others? I think the majority now will be, that is the Turkish. Turkish. Turkish will be majority because all the shops they have taken over from Bangladeshis. Mm -hmm. And they are opening almost every day new shops, new business, and they are hard working people. Mm -hmm. That will be followed by, they call it uh, Greek Cypriots. I think mm -hmm. this Turkish mm -hmm. also mm -hmm. Cypriots. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Turkish Cypriots and Greek Cypriots, they are the majority too. You said they are taking over from Bangladeshis. Yes. That means Bangladeshis were in business. They are in business only in Indian restaurants, mm -hmm. and that is being competition, mm -hmm. big competition mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. them because Turkish restaurant, they are coming every day in the mm -hmm. market, they are establishing themselves, and that's a big competition there as well. And their takeaways? Takeaway food, I think that is being challenged. Turkish are giving much cheaper food, probably their yeah. food is much cheaper. But this uh, so called Indian Mm -hmm. uh, restaurant, see, 95 percent of them are owned by Bangladeshis. Yes, yes. This generates nearly four billion pounds absolutely a every year. Mm -hmm. See, so the business is booming. Business is booming, maybe here other area, but because you you'll see that there are two bottles where Cypriots, mm -hmm. Cypriot Turkish and Cypriot Greeks, I think that is Herringe and Enfield. So they are they are the majority there. Yes. And I think next majority will be probably Caribbean people, then Somalian large number, about more than 10,000. But the Caribbean people are not in business. No, but they're in politics. That's a good thing is that. Mm -hmm. uh, unless you are in politics, for example, the other day when I went to a mosque and mm -hmm. they say, we have applied for a planning permission and nobody is listening to me. Mm -hmm. My question, why you don't become a part of that system whereby you will be deciding, not them will be deciding. In other words, you will be on the planning committee as a Muslim mm -hmm. and you will be deciding. But if you remain aloof and all the political and on economic the, on the sides, on the, on the side, you will not be able to progress. I think that's why I'm still saying everybody join the politics, get the power in your hand, then try to bring about the changes you want. Without that, 
shouting outside doesn't make any direct mm -hmm. sort of mm -hmm. improvement anywhere. That is my experience and my views. You have to take the power. Yeah, but uh, if, if be just before they can take uh, over power, because that is like, like uh, taking part in the elections and then winning and mm -hmm. then that party winning the majority seat to be controlling a party of the borough. Yeah. So be before that and even in addition to that, they can approach their MPs and uh, explain to them that these are the circumstances we are suffering and if, if, if the communication is not there, people will not know. My view, I think, not the established view. I think you go to the MP, <coughs> you go to the, you say, for example, we have a surgery of counselors, mm -hmm. and we meet every day. But that is not the same thing when you start giving the services to the people, not taking the services. You have mm -hmm. to change your seat. Mm -hmm. No more taking, giving now. I'm sitting on the other side as a counselor. For, take my life. I was the only Bengali counselor. How come? Out of 63 councillors, I got elected as a mayor. To take the other example, how I become the cabinet member in charge of a whole voluntary sector. Mm -hmm. Because that is, you have to have an ambition, you have to know the politics, you have to talk straight. Never indulge in anything other than good and truth. And then everybody recognizes you and then you get the position, otherwise you don't. It takes time. It takes, not takes time, your straightforwardness, and trustworthiness has to be proved to any establishment, otherwise they will not believe it. Good. Go on that point, I would like to ask you, are you encouraging others to join politics? Without that, I think Bangladeshi will be there where they are now. Because Bangladeshi... But that they're, they're doing very well in, in London Borough uh, Tower. Tower. They have done a little better than Amlet's before, see. but not to my expectation, they should mm -hmm. do much better than they're doing. Mm -hmm. For example, they should, you can see their standard of living, their business, although the industry, for example, the restaurant industry in India is good, mm -hmm. and they're doing a lot of good things. But that is the only area where they are good. What I'm saying about that, we need to see local directors, we need to see minister in the central government, we need to see more MPs, Bangladesh MP, only one or two probably. One. One. So can you imagine out of 650 members, it will, Bangladesh it will take time, one see. million people. It will take one. time, it will take time. No, I think, that I think is a very, very sort of contingent view. That is a very... Yes, you know, it will take time, you see. If, if, you if have people, to, as you, have you said, as if people are not keen about it, it will definitely take time. No, see. I think it is, it is the culture. Your culture needs to be changed. And it's changing, see, because we, if you look slow. at the different generations, see, they're slow. Your generation, the second generation, the third generation, or the fourth generation is coming. Mm -hmm. If you go to the, to the hospital, you go to the uh, banks, you go to the city in financial uh, institutions, you see so many Bangladeshis holding that very important that positions. That is in probably, for example, if I go to my own banks, take the example Enfield. Mm -hmm. I have yet to see a Bangladeshi employee providing service from the counters. That is, that is the reality of life. And not only here, but I think I'm, what I'm talking about. We need point, we will have to take a break and then when we come back, mm -hmm. we will talk more about uh, the opportunities that are there that uh, yes. our young, bright Bangladeshis can take and join politics. Definitely joining politics is a very good thing. But then again, they also should be doctors, engineers, and plumbers, Absolutely. and <laughs> otherwise everybody will be. There is no bar. If you become a doctor, okay. you can be a politician as well. No Thank you. Matter. We'll come back. Thank we'll you. Take a break. And we'll come Thank back. Thank you. Don't go away. We have to take a break. Apnara Dixin, Talking Point. Go join me, Mahbubin Co-Accountants.